Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabari here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week called A Monster Calls. It's a dark fantasy drama about a young boy who lives with his terminal ill mother and was visited by a giant monster who comes each night telling him free stories. It's from the director of The Orphanage and The Impossible, J.A. Bayona. It stars Louis McDougall, Sigourney Weaver, best known for Aliens and Ghostbusters, Felicity Jones, who was just recently in the film Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, Toby Cabell, with Liam Neeson, James McVell, and Geraldine Chaplin. It's written by Patrick Ness and it's directed once again by J.A. Bayona. The movie begins where we meet a young boy named Connor O'Malley who's played by Louis McDougal who one night had a nightmare where he was inside a cemetery where the church was collapsing into a giant hole and he was about to save his mother who's been diagnosed with terminal cancer and he's played by Felicity Jones which Connor tries to hang on until he let go and was woken up from his nightmare by the time it was 1207 he gets visited by a giant tree monster who's voiced by Liam Neeson and offers Connor to tell him free stories until he gets to tell the fourth one about his nightmare. And by the way, that giant tree monster basically looks similar to the character in the Gardens of the Galaxy named Groot. <laughs> the difference is here is that at least he speaks in Liam Neeson's voice. <laughs> so he doesn't go around saying, I am Groot. Like Vin Diesel said it in the movie. Well, anyway. So, most of the time, he only visits um, at 12.07, either a.m. or p.m. But Connor only understands that he doesn't want uh, his mother to die. So then, because of all the difficulties that's been going through, his grandmother, who's played by Sigourney Reaver, who's very strict, had told him that um, he was going to take care of him for a while, have him stay over at her place. But here was the problem. Connor doesn't get along with his grandmother very well because of the way she acts. Connor also loves to draw pictures of monsters by using pencils and watercolor paints. Yeah, and he was very good at it, too, since he basically uses his imagination. I mean, he never knew if, if this was part of his dream or not. But that would probably explain later on. Um, well, anyway, he had to stay at, at his grandma's house which didn't seem to go so well because he wasn't getting along with his grandmother and his mother had to be stayed in the hospital for a while so that way she can get full treatment hoping that she'll soon be better if not well his father had came to a visit just to see how's he doing and decided to go out and take him to a carnival and, and all these other places for a while but of course he came to visit uh, mostly because he had a business meeting in town and he was thinking that maybe uh, sooner or later he might be able to come to visit again you know, during Christmas but Connor thought it wasn't a good idea because he wanted to stay in his own home instead of staying with his grandmother because of the way 
his grandmother treats him. Yeah, and that's true. I mean, she's been acting like this. Since this was part of the imagination that he has, he goes around uh, trashing the, all the valuable stuff that his grandmother had you know, until she came by and found out the whole room is a mess. And then she got furious uh, herself, too. So Condor decided to have the tree monster tell him all these free stories before he gets to the last one. The first story is about basically a dark fairy tale in, that's similar to Snow White or any other kind where an old king was afraid to lose his young grandson from remarrying a young beautiful woman which he'll soon become a prince until the queen decided to uh, hire the prince to actually kill her which leads to revenge. The second story is about Apothecary who is following old traditions and beliefs which his business was less successful than ever as a local parson. And the third story is about a man who suddenly becomes invisible because no one could see him and he was actually tired of having him being invisible all the time so that way this is where you know he gets his revenge on the school bully so that's what leads to the fourth story where Connor has to tell himself to the monster that the last of his is pain so that way he can find a way to actually get to meet her mother one last time before what happens next. It's a truly sad fantasy that definitely seems to be the perfect choice to, to show uh, during the holidays, you know, because you're gonna be you're gonna be watching this movie in tears. I almost cried when I saw this and it's really sad having to see uh, Connor's mom already dying from a ter from terminal cancer, but yet at the same time, you know, you know, Connor himself is as brave as he can get, just trying to react to all the the events that he's been going through. It really gets to you. It is really painful having to feel very sufferable about having to deal with losing a parent because of, of the terminal illness and all of that and, and, and the fact that you have to live with difficult times staying with a relative who's, who's very strict in the way it's been treating him it just feels like enough is enough and the fact that his father's only came over just for business and gets to have a chance to, to see his son again you know, for a while yeah, that sort of thing yeah, it just, it happens, it happens to everybody. Well, I'm going to say this though, if you're expecting this movie to be like any other fantasy films that you've seen, well, that's where you're, you're in for. I mean, the story is very dark, it really gets to you somehow. It can be scary. Uh, I thought the, the animation that they did for the the monster was actually well made, almost close to looking like uh, very similar to, as I mentioned before, Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy. But um, Liam Neeson did a very good job um, playing the role. I mean, he's a very good storyteller right there, you know, telling the story about. Um, what happens uh, once he was there because actually he was there the, the whole time during those stories you know before where he offers Connor to tell the fourth story so we'll see what happens and he's not a bad monster at all I mean yeah sure the monster may have been almost as evil as he can be but that's how monsters can be when they act like that you know, they act evil and furious and all that, but deep down of it, 
This monster actually has a heart. And it shows. Deep down inside. And the kid, um, Louis McDougal, who plays Connor, actually did a great job. Um, and you definitely feel for him, too, for having to feel all that pain that he's been going through. I mean, you really feel sorry for him, too. You really do. And it's really touching right there. I mean, you also definitely feel sorry for um, Felicity Jones' character as the mother, because she was also very creative, too, just like Connor. I mean, when... Um, because she started doing all the drawings uh, that inspired him. And there you go. I mean, it, it even shows that she was a very caring mother. That sadly, he won't be able to get a chance to, to see her again. So that's just sad. Um, so Gordy Weaver, on the other hand, though, I had some problems with her in the movie. I mean, I don't even know why she's being cast these days as being strict and and mean and and all of that it's just and the fact that she's given a British accent in this movie just uh, didn't seem to work very well they could have had cast another actress to play the role I think it would have been so much better it just having to see Sigourney Weaver in, in this particular role just kinda of bothers me it really does so I don't know I mean she was okay, but she just wasn't that great in, in this film, and she could do better. But, I don't know, I mean, I, I think she's been suffering from paychecks after paycheck, and that's what she does. <laughs> because I know, she always will be um, Ellen Ripley and Dana Barrett to me. I mean, she could do good in other films, too. And, hell, she can even do good in Galaxy Quest, also. But it's just, she's always being cast in these, these type of roles these days, and that's a shame. Um, but anyway, the, the cast was great. Um, it's a great story. So just a reminder for families out there, for those who takes their kids to see this movie, just be aware that this is a dark fantasy drama that... Five-year-olds or, or even the eight-year-olds are going to be really scared of all the dark elements that this movie has. Especially with all the stories that went into it. And with all the killings and all of that that's in the film. Also the fact that, have another reminder of actually bringing in some Kleenex or something. Because you're going to be in tears once you see this. And also another reminder is, if you want to see a movie about monsters, definitely see this instead of the new movie that just came out called Monster Trucks, which features a creature that's a cross between a shark and an octopus, and wants to have been inside a monster truck, <laughs> going for all these wild adventures that's just gearing towards the, the age group of... <laughs> A four and nine, and of course, <laughs> you're probably going to feel sorry for yourself having to take your kids to see this mess and see which is worse. Well, anyway, <laughs> but I'll tell you this though this movie is way better than Monster Trucks. That's for sure. Just take them to a Monster Truck rally instead. <laughs> Okay, I, I know, I know, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit off topic on that one, but it's just that I, I can't believe that movie had to come out just after this, and it just shows why studios just love to push this stuff in the month of January, just for the start of the new year, of course. Well, anyway, but back to that, um, check it out. So I give the film five stars. I'm Joseph Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.